You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And then we're taking our first hot topic. And what we're calling our first hot topic is we're trying to x-ray how the first 100 days of the present administration has been like. How has he fared? What the first 100 days of the Tinubu presidency tells us. Like they say, a dog that will know how to hunt, you will know it when it's still a puppy. So we have uh, joining us here public affairs analyst uh, Nick Agule to x-ray the first 100 days of the Tinubu presidency. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Agule. Good morning and uh, good morning to our viewers. Okay, it's going to be 100 days in about three days. What do you think it has been like? so far i mean thank you very much uh for that uh, question uh topical question also 100 days being marked today by the expectations of the decision of the presidential election petition court uh whether it will be a uh, granting president Tinubu uh the leave to continue into the 101 days going forward or they are going to say that uh, his uh, election uh, is not tenable. So we're, we're expecting all eyes uh, on the court to see what that is going to have, uh, come up with in these 100 days. Now, uh, to x-ray and appraise the government of President Tinubu in the first 100 days, my overall rating of this government is that it is below expectations. Below expectations in the sense that, first of all, President Tinubu has not made a departure from what previous governments that have failed have done. You get to see someone who has embarked on a trip to know whether he will be successful or not, if that person is following the same footpath of those before him who did not finish well, or whether the president is taking his own footpath, which will show a departure from what we have had before. President Tinubu has not shown evidence in his first 100 days that he is prepared to walk his own way. Instead, he is following in the same footsteps of those behind, uh, before, uh, those who were before him and who did not make it or who did not finish properly. And how do I mean, number one, President Tinubu was elected in February of 2023 and got his uh, certificate of return in that February. Immediately he got the certificate of return. It needed to have dawned upon him that he is now the president in waiting of Nigeria, that he has now got the mandate to lead Nigeria. And what he needed to do was to settle down immediately and begin to form his government. So that on the 29th of May, when he was sworn in, his government will go into full swing from day one. And we saw President Tinubu junketing all over the world, was going to London, going to France, spending time over there. And it had to take the law of Nigeria that he must form a cabinet within 60 days to force his hands to announce a cabinet on day 60 of his assuming office. And even at that, President Tinubu broke the law by not announcing the full cabinet. He only announced part of the cabinet just at the deadline of the 60 days, which shows that if he was not forced by the law to announce his cabinet, within the 60 days, we could probably not have had the cabinet today. And then when he announced the cabinet, we would discover that 
it, it was not that he went shopping for uh, competent hands all over the world who are Nigerians that he announced as his cabinet. He announced the regular politicians that we know about, ex-governors, ex-senators, and all of that. Is this the kind of people that it took him 60 days after swearing in, or more than uh, 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 five months from when he, he was elected to announce to us? So to me, he followed the full step of his, of his uh, predecessors. Uh, who didn't announce cabinets in time. And it shows clearly that this is someone who, who didn't come to the job prepared. That is the first one. The second one is that President Tinubu in announcing his cabinet, the constitution forces his hands to announce 36 people as cabinet members because the constitution says you must have a minister from each state. Then announce 45 people, 48 even, because some were not eventually cleared hmm. as a ministers. How can the president be telling us to tighten our belt to endure the sufferings that have come upon us with the economic policies that uh, he has embarked upon? But he is not showing that. You know, what does he need 45 ministers for? You know, that is the, the, the second thing. <laughs> the third thing, <clears throat> sorry, the, the third thing is that of all the ministries in Nigeria, there is this ministry called Ministry of Petroleum. All of President Tinubu's predecessors in this uh, Third Republic, as, aside from Good Lord Jonathan, hold tightly onto the Ministry of Petroleum, where they say they are minister. And one expected that President Tinubu will make a remarkable departure from that and announce a substantive minister of uh, petroleum. No. He has also heard on to the Minister of Petroleum, where he says he's minister. The question is that why? Because, you see, President Tinubu is the one that got the mandate from Nigerians to, 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 to take over the reins of government for the next four years. Every minister that he has appointed is only sharing in that mandate that was given to him. Every minister. So, what is so special about the Minister of Petroleum that President Tinubu now feels that he must be minister. How busy a president is. Why would the president now hold on to a ministerial position? Why would he give minister of finance to somebody else to share the workload with him and now hold on to petroleum? To me, it shows that President Tinubu is not ready to be a man of his. So he's not ready to be different. And then... We look at the policies that the president has brought to bear. The first thing is, in his inaugural speech, he says that uh, fuel subsidy is gone. And immediately the following day, the NNPC, who is the sole importer of petroleum, hikes the, the price of petroleum from 180, 190 to 537 on Nigerians. Okay, agreed. Fuel subsidy has been a conduit that Nigeria's commonwealth has been looted over the years. So removing it saves us from the banditry on our treasury. But what is President Tinubu now doing to cushion the effect of this subsidy remover? President Tinubu doesn't seem to realize that the fuel subsidy is only a symptom. And what is the cause of that symptom? The cause is that Nigeria's four refineries have been allowed to die. Since he came into office now, 100 days, President Tinubu has not even mentioned the refineries in any of his speeches. He never mentioned the refineries in his inauguration speech when he said fuel subsidy is gone. One would have expected that. He would have said fuel subsidy is gone, but Nigeria's refineries are going to be up and running in X amount of time. Then you will know that this is a president. Yeah, who but, has but they have said they have said that it's going to be running in December. That the fuel, uh, the the refineries will be running in December. They have told us that. Okay, so so let us go back to that point. The Pohako refinery that they are saying uh, it was is going to start running in December. Remember that the Pohako refinery uh, refurbishment was awarded for an eighteen month period by the then Minister of State for Petroleum, uh, Dimitri uh, uh, Silva. If I think very well when that award happened, 
That are what would have happened about more than two years ago. And since that time, we have been having these repeated promises of the refinery coming on stream. And it has not happened. Why has it not happened? It does not happen because the NNPC that has allowed the refineries to die is the one that is still in charge. President Tinubu will show a remarkable departure and a, a sense of purpose and mission to rescue Nigeria's downstream petroleum sector if by now he had already finalized the process of either selling outrightly those refineries to global investors or in the minimum busy them out. We cannot keep hoping on an MNPC. It's a hopeless organization. You know, that, that is the same way we were hoping on NITE. We kept hoping on NITE to give us phones. And we never saw phones until the MTNs and co came in. So I could put a bet on the table now and say that in December of this 2023, that refinery is not going to work. I can put a bet if only anybody wants to take it. So that is what I'm saying. President Tinubu needs to show a departure from the status quo. The status quo is that we have handed over this refinery to the NNPC. The NNPC has not been able to run them for more than 20 years. If President Tinubu still continues with the NNPC, what's going to be the magic? What we expected him to do was to walk away from what has been happening before that has not given us any results. And as we speak today, global downstream operators would have taken these four refineries and they will be on their way to delivery of the refineries. So that is this, that's this about the refineries. Mm. Now, President Tinubu uh, uh, makes an announcement um, about fuel subsidy gone. There's nothing on the table to show otherwise. He talks about going to import buses and bringing them into Nigeria. But he's not talking about rail transportation, for instance, which is the, 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 the more efficient, more effective, and uh, the more affordable means of transport. Okay, just, just this morning, uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, Nick, just this morning, the, one of the headlines said that the federal government has asked the state governments to fund rail lines in the region. So <clears throat> is that something you would welcome? Is that one of the things you are talking about, that they should concentrate or encourage rail transportation and all that? He said the federal, the federal government has said the state government should fund regional rail lines. I, I, I am happy with that uh, because the states over time have been fizzed with airports. Airports that is only rats and uh, cockroaches and, and snakes uh, that they use over time. Uh, uh, you know, the states needed to start building rails within their states and then connecting those rails to each other such that you will not see that the southeast region, the north central, southwest, south south, northeast, northwest, we start connectivity of the rail lines that the states have built over time. So I welcome uh, such news, but let us not forget that as we speak today, it is the federal government that has got rail lines laid in Nigeria. There are rail lines laid in Nigeria. I know that for sure there is a, a rail line from Port Harcourt all the way to Meduguri that has been laid. I know that for sure because I have traveled on it. That, that rail line passes through Makodi where I boarded the train in my teenage uh, years to Port Harcourt. It is the federal government that has got rail lines from Lagos heading towards the north as well. Why is the federal government not dealing with this rail infrastructure that they have now? Because it is easier and quicker, a low-hanging fruit, to deal with the infrastructure that is already on the ground than to go and build the new one that the federal government wants states to do. So why is the president not leading that charge? And like I said, he doesn't need to spend a couple of his money, or federal government's money, to do that. He only needs to let this rare infrastructure that is already on ground out to the private sector in a transparent process that will attract global capital. And as we speak today, would have been 
uh, would have got some of the global rail operators around the world already refurbishing the rail tracks from Potaco going north and from Lagos going north. It's a start. Before he will concession the rest of the country out to global rail operators to start laying tracks. So this is the kind of purposefulness that is missing in this government. One thought this government came prepared, they were already aware of the of the uh, of the problems that were bedeviling the country and that they were going to hit the ground running. That is not that doesn't look like it's happening. Okay. Let's go uh, to uh, the, the issue. Yeah. Yeah. As as we're wrapping up now, because uh, unfortunately time has gone. As we're wrapping up now, let's really answer the question that brought us here. What uh, the first 100 days of Tinubu presidency tells us. So when you have, you have said uh, he did not depart from what the, everybody else, else has been doing. So you've given us a background. Uh, if after the judgment today he still remains the president, what do you see in the next four years for Nigeria from what you have seen in these first 100 days? I, I thank you very much. So if uh, President Tinubu continues in office, the first 100 days of his administration were like a so administrator days where President Tinubu, failing to appoint a cabinet in time, ran government all by himself. We now hope that in the next 100 days after today, if he's given the mandate to continue, with 45 uh, men and women now uh, forming his cabinet, that government policy will not change from the status quo to a remarkable departure that gives us hope that this government is going to do things differently. So we, we will need to reconvene again after another 100 days, to now say, what is a President Tinubu government with, now, with 45 ministers now in the saddle promising or looks like? Otherwise, the first 100 days have been underwhelming. They have, they have been gloomy. It doesn't show that the president knows what he's doing. I was just about to address the, 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 the forest unification, which uh, he, he has done. Uh, and he has not done anything about it because, you see, the forex thing can only be solved by two things. Number one, increase the dollar supply into the market. Number two, reduce the demand for dollars. President Tinubu hasn't done anything to increase the dollar supply. For instance, they are stealing one million barrels of Nigeria's crude oil. What has he done since he came into office? If President Tinubu summons the service chiefs in his office and reads the riot act to them and says, if they steal one one Barrel, one barrel of Nigeria could oil. Yeah. All of you are going home. That criminality will stop. And if we save one million barrels per day, at today's uh, uh, prices of $90 a barrel, that is $90 million every day that we will get into our economy. I haven't seen anything like that. Instead, All the right. private security firm that was awarded the contract, President Tinubu has continued with it. I see the Nigerian Navy does not know what they are doing. President yes. Tinubu, in his, in his speech, in our grass speech, say, oh, the interest rate that is charged by banks is too high. So businesses are not thriving. And that is true. Complete identification of the problem. But under his watch, under, right under his nose, the central bank had an MPC meeting and they increased the interest rate. Why did he not summon the acting central bank governor to his office and say, come on, why are you increasing interest rate on a, on okay. a, a cost push inflation? This is not a demand pool inflation. This is cost push. Why are you increasing interest rate? I All want right, interest rate to crash to, to single digits so that businesses can, uh, can have access to cheap uh, credit and boost this economy. The economy is not producing. We really need to, to wrap it up here. You understand? Nick. We need to wrap it up here, Nick. Uh, well, uh, we've seen the picture that uh, the first 100 days has painted, and we do hope that there will be a marked uh, a departure from the status quo, from what has always been happening. We'd like to thank you so much, Nick, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you very much, and uh, let's keep our eyes on the judiciary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was Nick Agule, public affairs analyst, who joined us from uh, uh, join us this morning to X-ray the first 100 days of uh, the Tinubu presidency. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the uh, whether. The political climate in Nigeria favors the youths to thrive. Stay with us.